Let's draw and explain the NMR spectrum for acid aldehyde. That's CH3CHO. If I was to draw the Lewis structure for that, you're going to have an aldehyde group on one of the carbons. The other carbon of the chain is a CH3 group. Acet aldehyde means there's a two carbon chain. Well, the aldehyde part means that there's a double bonded O and a single H at the end of the molecule. Now, the way that NMRs are structured has zero ppm on the far right. The x-axis can go to 10, sometimes even higher, and it's measured in ppm. There is often a peak exactly at zero for tetramethyl silane. That's how you know where zero ppms is. Now, let's start with the methyl group. The methyl group is the furthest away from the electronegative atoms. It's going to have an integrated area of three because there are three equivalent hydrogens on that carbon. And it's going to be split a single time once. I don't know how you write the word once with a one. That's because there's one hydrogen on the carbon that it is connected to. So in order to figure out how many times it's split, remember, you're taking a look at the carbon that the hydrogens are attached to, looking at the carbons next to those and asking how many hydrogens are those, is that attached to. It is split a single time here. Now, because they are me uh, methyl hydrogens and this carbon isn't directly bonded to anything with an electronegative atom on it, it's going to be generally low on the ppm scale. When I looked it up, it was around two, slightly higher than two. So you're going to want a one tall peak that gets split once. When it splits once, it ends up breaking up into two equal sized peaks that are separated by some amount. Now let's talk about this hydrogen. There's only one hydrogen there, chemically equivalent hydrogen. So the total area under the peaks of the NMR for this hydrogen is going to be one third the total area under these peaks. Now, how badly are they going to be split? Well, that hydrogen is on that carbon, which is connected to that carbon, and it has three hydrogens on it. So it's going to be split three times. Now, when one thing splits into two, and then those two split themselves, you end up with a pattern like one, two, one. This, uh, this one will split into two, and this one will split into two, but these two ones overlap in the center, so it ends up being double the height of the two on the ends. And similarly, when you split a third time, you end up with a pattern like one, three, three, one. This is the beginning of Pascal's triangle, if you're curious, but I'm just trying to show you where I'm going to get the peak arrangement. Lastly, because this hydrogen is on a carbon that is directly bonded, double bonded to an electronegative atom, it's going to be very high on the ppm scale, somewhere between 8 and 10, I think, is where the aldehydes lie. I'm going to put it closer to 10. The arrangement that I need is a little stub, another stub that's three times as tall as that one then another one that's equal in height to the tall one, and another little stub. The idea is that the relative heights here are 1 to 3 to 3 to 1. Cool! So this is your NMR spectrum. You may or may not have to show TMS, but you have a single hydrogen. Sorry, you have three hydrogens split once here. Those are your methyl hydrogens. You have one hydrogen split three times here. That's what gives you the 1331, three, one, and they're all relatively short to the actual NMR. Now, when you actually look this up on uh, the spectral database online, it ends up giving you something like this. It's a beautiful thing, well explained. Thank you for being here, and best of luck.